Hello, and thank you for joining. Today's topic is going to be using Office 365 Excel in order to calculate the future value of an investment or a savings account in order to reach a goal, whether that's <clears throat> to save for something, a car, or a house down payment, college, retirement, whatever it may be. The one difference from this example and a previous future value example that I've provided, and I'll put the link in the description for that if you want to reference that, is this one is variable rates of return, whereas the previous previous example has a steady rate of return. To start off with, I've added a few pieces of information up here to help us with the calculations and the details. So we're going to assume that we have 10 years to save, and we're going to assume in this case that we have $10,000 to start off our initial savings with. And then we're also going to assume that over that 10-year period, we're going to add $3,000 into this savings account or investment, whatever you want to call it. The first thing that I've done, done here is you notice I put years 1 through 10 in the, in the uh, row, uh, column A here. And then I've made these numbers up. These are not real numbers. They're not referencing any historical numbers from index funds or mutual funds or anything like that. But this may be something that would look typical in a stock market. Some years are up, some years are down. And so obviously you don't know the future, but you could always use historical information if you wanted to just do hypothetical um, scenarios. So again, these are just made up returns. You see 13.5% gain, 5%, 5.1% gain, then a loss of 27.4 and so on. You'll notice I've also formatted the cells as a percentage here in order so that the formulas work correctly. So the first thing we're going to do is over here in the beginning balance, what we're going to do is we're going to reference our beginning amount of do, uh, dollars that we have here, which in this case is the $10,000 and that's cell B2. So we're going to go ahead and put that beginning balance there referencing that value here, the starting value. And then what we're going to do, we're going to calculate what our investment income or our loss is for the year. So how we're going to do that, we're going to say equals, then we're going to take our beginning balance and multiply it by the annual return. So in this case, you'll see that it came out to $1,350, which makes sense. 13.5% of 10,000 is 1,350. And then we're going to go ahead and deposit $3,000 at the end of that year. So I'm going to reference cell B3, which is at $3,000. Well, let me do that again. And at return, I'll put the $3,000 there, $3,000 in the deposit field. Okay, so now we're going to have to calculate the ending balance. So we're going to do equals the beginning balance plus the gain or loss plus the deposit, which takes place at the end of the year. So notice the investment income or loss was calculated on the beginning balance. It does not include, include the deposit because that's done at the end of the year in this scenario. So now we have our ending balance of 14,350. And now to get the beginning balance, we are going to reference for year two, we're going to reference the cell F six. Okay, because that will be our starting balance on day one of year two. And then we'll do the same thing. Now what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to copy this formula down. And the way we do that is just use autofill and we'll just click, we'll highlight the cell, select the cell, and then when you see the cursor turn to the cross here, just hold down your mouse, your left mouse button and drag it down to the to where you want it to end. You notice these are all zero because we don't have any values here yet. Okay, so now if we were to copy this down, you'll see that it, it copied down B4, B5, B6. We don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. So now what we need to do is we're gonna invest $3,000 every year so now what we need to do here is we need to reference that cell B3 every time. So we need to reference the absolute value of B3 here for all of these. So what we're going to do, you can do this two ways. You can highlight the in the 
in the function format bar up here. You can highlight B3 and you can type, or you can hold down the function key and hit F4. And that's going to add dollar sign in front of the column and the cell. I'll hit return. And now if I were to copy this down, you'll see it will retain the $3,000. Every cell is still referencing B3. It doesn't auto, you know, doesn't auto, you know, progress through the, the cells. The other thing you can do is just manually add the dollar signs in there, highlight it, you know, put the cursor where you want to, highlight it and add the, add the dollar signs. But function F4 will do that for you, okay? So now what we're going to do is we are going to um, copy this formula down because this is referencing F6. This one will reference F7 and so on. So you see this one's F7. And now what we'll do is just copy this formula down. We use autofill. By the way, in autofill, one thing you can do, assuming you have data in the next column, is you can highlight that cell and just double click with your mouse and it will autofill in down to the, the bottom cell next to the row. If you were to do that, try to do that on a row, on a, on a column that didn't have surrounding cells, or surrounding um, columns with data, it would, you know, go all the way to the bottom of the spreadsheet, which is something you typically would not want. Okay, so now what we have here is we're showing the, you know, the gain or loss every year, and then the final value. And you can change this formatting if you want to. Like if you wanted to change the number formatting, you could change it here. Go into currency and change it. And you could do this. We change it to parentheses for losses and that way it will stand out in red there. So you can see this year we lost almost 5,000. This year was almost 1,500. <clears throat> and so again, this is if you want to use variable return rates. You can also do the same thing here instead of referencing the $3,000. One year you can put in 1,000 and another year you can put in 5,000. You can do this however you want to. The other thing you could do if you were using this for retirement is you could add a Another column here where you had a withdrawal, and then you could you know, calculate that in the formula, so you'd add another column there. That's what I want to share with you today. Thanks for joining, and if you're interested in other Excel and other Office and other technical content, please subscribe, and thank you for joining. Have a great day.